Welcome back to part two of this lesson where we use heat of vaporization in calculations. We ended off with question three, which reads, suppose that 0 0.48 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius condenses on the surface of a 55 gram block of aluminum that is initially 25 degrees. If the heat released during condensation goes only towards heating the metal, what is the final temperature in Celsius of the metal block? So you can picture that there's water being placed on a block of metal and that water is losing its heat. The first thing that we want to do is calculate how much energy is being lost by this water. And we can do that by using one of the numbers that we used in question number one, namely the heat of vaporization of water. And we found out that it was 40.7 kilojoules per every one mole of water at 100 degrees. So I'm going to rewrite that. 40.7 kilojoules per one mole of H2O. We're told that the mass of water is 0 0.48 grams. And using this mass and the molar mass of water, we can actually find out the amount of moles. Once we find the amount of moles, we can multiply it to this number and we'll get the energy in kg. Here's what I mean. So 0 0.48 grams will be multiplied to the molar mass of water, which we found out in part one was 18.02 grams per mole. So I'll put down one mole at the top and 18.02 grams at the bottom. Notice that the grams unit will cancel out and we're left with, let's use our calculator, 0 0.48 divided by 18.02. And you have to keep in mind significant figures. It should have only two significant figures. So I'll write down 0 0.02663. I'll keep those digits for now. I don't want to lose anything important. 2663. And we know that this has to be two significant figures, so I'll just put a dot right underneath the 6 so I don't forget. I'll take this number now, which is in moles, and I'll multiply it to this. 40.07 kg per one mole. Multiply to 0 0.02663 moles. This cancels out. And we're left with 40.07 times 0 0.02663. And we get 1.067 kg, 1.067 kilojoules. And this has to be two significant figures, don't forget. Don't round now. So I'll just put a dot right underneath here. And this is the amount of energy that is released. Now, interestingly, the question gives us the specific heat capacity of aluminum and it's in joules. So I'm going to convert this into joules and I can do that by taking this decimal place three times to the right where I end up with 1067 joules. Don't forget it's two significant figures. So how do we relate this to the specific heat capacity? For that we'll use this formula and we've seen this formula before we've used it and it says that the energy is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. We know a lot of this information. We know that the aluminum is 55 grams. That will go here, two significant figures. We know the specific heat capacity will go into there. And the energy lost by water, according to this question, goes directly into the metal. So the energy gained by aluminum is 1067 joules. Let's go ahead and replace all of that information. We're almost done. So we have 1067 is equal to 55 grams. And notice that they match. So we don't have to change grams into anything. 0 0.903. And I'll put the units just to show you that they all cancel out. Joules grams and Celsius at the bottom. And this one was joules. And this is being multiplied to delta T. Now we don't know the final temperature, but we do know the initial. And delta T represents final minus initial. T final minus the initial of 25 degrees. We're now solving an algebraic problem. Notice that we have a factor on the outside and uh, two terms on the inside of these parentheses, so we'll need to multiply this in, it's called expanding, and we need to solve for T sub F. Let's use our calculator to make things a little easy for us. 55 times 
0 0.903. Remember, this should be two significant figures, but I'll write down everything. 49.665. 49.665. This should be two significant figures so far. And it's being multiplied to these two terms. So T sub F. And I'll multiply this factor by negative 25, which gives us negative 1241.625, negative 1241.625, and this also should be two significant figures. We need to solve for this variable, 1067. Moving this term over to this side makes it positive, and then we divide both sides by this factor. So your expression should look like 1067 plus 12 41.625 divided by 49.665 gives us T sub F, and the units should all cancel out, leaving you with only Celsius. Let's go ahead and do this. 1067 plus 1241.625 divided by 49.665, and we end up with 46.4. And to two significant figures, that's 46 degrees. 46 degrees Celsius. So to conclude, the temperature of the block will be 46 degrees Celsius if 0 0.48 grams of water condenses at 25 degrees. And there you have it. That is how to use the heat of vaporization in calculations.